Hey guys, Pokemon Collectibles here with another Pokemon Top 10. Today I will be talking about the Top 10 Pokemon that deserve a Mega from Generation 1. Number 10, Mew. Now Mew is my favorite legendary from Generation 1. I've always liked it a lot better than Mewtwo just because from the very beginning it seems as though Mew is the good one and Mewtwo is the evil one. I mean, I know you later find out that they're both good, it's just Mewtwo was corrupt but Mew, I think, deserves a Mega at least one because Mewtwo got two Megas, but Mew never even got one. So it's really not fair that they never gave Mew a Mega. Number nine, Tauros. Taurus is a really cool Pokemon. I think I have the same reason as why Farfetch'd also deserves a Mega, but Taurus has never had a pre-evolved form, and they've never made him a post-evolved form. Now, I know they can't do that with every Pokemon out there, but, I mean, even Pikachu got a pre-evolved form, and we never thought that was going to happen because Pikachu had Raichu. So, why give it a pre-evolved form when it has a post-evolved form? I mean, I get it. Pikachu is a lot more popular than Taurus, but Taurus is always been one of my favorites because of his design. I really like the idea of a bull Pokemon and I've always liked how they executed his design. He looks really cool. That's the reason though, you know, Tauros never, never got a pre-evolved form. You know, they could have made a Pokemon that's a cap. I think he deserves a Mega just to give him a little extra something. Number eight, Farfetch'd. Now, no matter which way you say this Pokemon's name, Farfetch'd, Farfetch'd, he's still a really cute little Pokemon. If I remember right, he is a duck and he has a leak, which was kind of a joke. I think when they first made him is when you eat any duck recipe, you usually have leaks with it. So that's a little weird, but I think he deserves a Mega because number one, even though we're now in sixth gen of Pokemon, he does not have a pre-evolution or a post evolution evolution from what I've seen and I just think it deserves a mega because of that reason. Number seven, Rapidash. Rapidash being another one of my favorite Pokemon. I think it too deserves a Mega. In this picture, I think it looks kind of like a Digimon, so I'm not really too sure about this one. I, I'm not really too sure about the armor on it. I do think Rapidash deserves a Mega, but maybe just like give it a different color of flame, not like the shiny that it has, but maybe make it all red or all a different color. Maybe give it wings, like really small wings. Maybe make the horn a little bit cooler looking. Looking. It would look really cool, whatever results it would get. Number six, Persian. One of my favorite Pokemon. I think Persian deserves a Mega, you know? Persian is a really cool Pokemon. Like I said, I think I covered this in a different video that I actually am not too fond of Meowth that much. But Persian has always been one of my favorites. So again, it's another Mega that I would really love to see where they go with it. Just like in this picture right here, I think this is a really cool Mega for him. I think it's very well representative of a really cool Persian Mega. And I'd really love to see this one actually become its Mega. Number five, Venomoth. Now this goes along with the argument of Butterfree and Beedrill. If Butterfree and Beedrill both have a Mega, then Venomoth also deserves a Mega because it is one of the bug Pokemon that's really cool. I've always loved the fact that they made a Moth as well as a Butterfly. So Venomoth has never really been one of my favorite Pokemon, but I always just thought, like I said before, if Butterfree deserves a Mega, which it does, then Venomoth also deserves a Mega, especially one that would make it look a little more pretty. Number four, Ninetales. I have really always loved Ninetales and Vulpix. They're two of my favorite Pokemon from the first few games. And I just think it'd be really cool to see what they would do with uh, Ninetales. To me, it, since I've become a Naruto fan, it kind of reminds me of uh, Kurama a little bit. Correct me in the comments if I said that wrong. I'm not really too sure about a lot of the Japanese pronunciations. But yeah, Ninetales is a really awesome Pokemon. And I'd really love to see where they would take that as far as Megas go. I'd really love to see a Mega. Number three, Nidoking. I've always really liked Nidoking from the games as well as Nidoqueen, so I think he definitely deserves a Mega. I just think it'd be cool, you know, to see what kind of artwork would come out of that, especially with the fact that Nidoqueen is also on this list. I think if one got a Mega, then it'd be really weird for the other not to get a Mega. Number two, Nidoqueen. 
And I found some really amazing megas for Nitto Queen. There's a lot of talent out there from people that made artworks for Nitto Queen. And I don't know, I just always felt like the last sprite of Nitto Queen always looked like it could go another step, but they never took it another step. Number one, Butterfree. I think Butterfree deserves a mega because Beedrill has a mega. That's kind of the basis of my argument here. It seems though as though Beedrill is the only one they got a mega. I guess it's because it's the most popular of the two. Thanks guys for watching and have an awesome day.